There was a crooked man, and he walked a crooked mile. He had a crooked little notion and a crooked little smile. The subject today is Rape Apologetics with Michael Crook. This video is for Daranak, who was DMCA'd for his efforts to expose Mr. Crook's attempts to dismiss rape as a fictional event. Kudos to you, Dar, and thanks for bringing this to our attention. Before we even get to the content of the video itself, Mr. Cook has a few words to add in his text description. He begins his argument by identifying as a Mormon. This has the effect of an argument ad populum, but also implies argument from authority. His next statement is a clear argument from authority in saying that he is he has verified his opinion with church doctrine and has consulted with authorities within the LDS Church. He is saying, in effect, that he is right because the LDS Church affirms his position, but he is also saying that all members of his church also share his opinion. I seriously doubt that this is the case, but it remains to be seen whether this claim of compositional generalization is real or fallacious. I suspect that it is the latter. He then goes on to say that while rape is wrong, a woman has an obligation to defend her virtue even unto death. In other words, that she has an obligation to die in the attempt to prevent the rape. Suicide, rather than simply to attempt to survive the assault. This carries the implication that what he's actually saying is that rape doesn't actually occur if the victim survives. This is confirmed by the opening introduction to this video. Well, on the one hand, he's saying that a woman has an obligation to some other party, to him perhaps, to report the rape immediately. On the other hand, he's also saying that if she were alive to report it, it wouldn't be rape. He then provides another argument from authority that uh, LDS elder Richard G. Scott agrees and supports his position. He then reiterates that she is responsible for being raped if she remains alive. I basically, or actually I am of the opinion that rape is pretty much a fictional thing. When a woman says that she was raped, she's pretty much lying. She's pretty much making it up. Now, I'm looking at some statistics from the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. Uh, they're at rain.org slash statistics. That's r-a-i-n-n dot org slash statistics. Uh, according to them, uh, one in six women will be sexually assaulted in her lifetime. and 60% of sexual assaults are not reported to the police. Now, there is a reason that 60% of these assaults are not reported. And that's simply because they didn't happen, or at least no crime happened. I believe that when a woman says she was raped, what really happened was that she asked for it. What really happened was that she asked for it, and she did something to invite it, and when she got it, changed her mind. See, most women like to use rape as a tool, as a weapon. So, it's really troubling when society automatically believes them and automatically wants to ostracize the guy put him in jail or kill him or whatever it is without even giving him a trial or evaluating the woman's story. As we saw with the Crystal Schinkel case, she tried to tell uh, everybody on the internet that she was raped when she told the police that it was consensual. Um, the prosecution didn't even believe her and we shouldn't either. And that's the way it is with all women really. I really do not believe there is such a thing as a, le a legitimate rape case. That's the reason why 60% of assaults don't happen. If a woman really was assaulted and there really was a rape that she really was a victim of, 
She would be running to the police station. She would be wanting justice and revenge. But instead, she knows that she asked for it. She knows that she invited it. And buyer's remorse or regretting it or whatever, that's not an excuse to cry rape. And unfortunately, that's what most women do. Um, so it, I stand firm in my belief that there's no such thing as an actual rape case. Uh, any woman who says she was raped is a liar. These women that are saying, oh, I'm a survivor. I'm a rape survivor. You're a rape liar is what you are. Uh, again, no such thing as rape. Don't fall for a woman's story that she was raped. You know, that's just pure bull. Um, so that's where I stand on the issue, and I do welcome your comments. You can come to my blog at michaelcook.net. You'll find some forums there. Go ahead and register for an account. It's free. Uh, sound off. I do respect freedom of speech and uh, differing opinions. So come by and you know, say your piece.